Hey guys, you've been asking for some shorter videos, so here we go. Everything I go through in this video comes from Mr. Bruff's Guide to an Inspector Calls, available for £3.99 at mrbruff.com. What we're going to go through are some unanswered questions and some frequently asked questions about this play. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at today is was Inspector Gould real? Now, ultimately, it doesn't matter whether Inspector Gould was a real inspector or not. The reason Priestley leaves this question unanswered is likely because that's not what the play is really about. By having us, the audience, and of course the Burlings as well, question whether or not Ghoul was real and whether or not the family are actually on trial, it makes us focus on the actions and attitudes of the characters regardless of the outcome. Ultimately, does it matter if you commit a crime but don't get caught and don't feel guilty or take any responsibility? Priestley and the inspector believe it does matter. It's not about whether or not you, like Sheila, have someone fired who's already been fired from another job. It's that Eva was unfairly sacked in the first place. Priestley was a socialist, as we know, and he's suggesting that the lesson to be learned is one of social responsibility. We should take responsibility for our behaviour towards others because that's the right thing to do, not because we're worried who will catch us doing otherwise. Another question we often get asked is, what is the significance of the photographs he carries? Well, the thing we have to wonder is, who is in those photographs? Are Eva and Daisy the same person? Again, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, the Burlings did what they did to a person, and it doesn't matter if it was the same person. And this ties in with the mystery surrounding Inspector Gore's identity. The Burlings treated someone badly, and it doesn't really matter if they were part of a chain of events or not. The point is we all need to take responsibility for our actions and look after one another. And the inspector makes this message clear in his final speech where he says we're members of one body, we're responsible for each other. You can check out the inspector calls song uh, for that quotation and others. Now Eric never reveals the name of the girl he met and Mrs Burning only knew the girl by the name she called herself, also Mrs Burning. So it's possible it was a different girl who they all met. But ultimately it makes no difference as they still treated a girl, any girl, in the way they did. The photographs are a device which prompt the audience and the characters to consider whether or not Eva stroke Daisy are the same person and whether or not each of the Burlings has in some way had an effect on the same girl. The characters sometimes try and see the same picture but the inspector never allows it, always controlling the situation and making them wait their turn returning the picture or pictures to his pocket in the meantime. It's Gerald, near the end of the play, who questions whether or not the inspector is real and whether or not they've all been questioned about the same girl. Eric and Sheila remain distraught. It doesn't matter to them whether or not Gould is actually an inspector and whether or not they've all been talking about the same girl. They both recognise that they've done wrong and they take responsibility for their actions. In contrast, Mr and Mrs Burning see the possibilities of fakery as a way of avoiding the situation and any guilt that they might be feeling over their actions. Another question we often get, what's the significance of the telephone call at the very end of the play? Well, just when the tension seems to have reduced with the information that there is no Inspector Gould on the force in Brumley and no girl in the infirmary having committed suicide by drinking bleach, the final telephone call builds it up again before leaving us ultimately on a cliffhanger. This structure could be frustrating for some readers or members of the audience as it is essential um, for us to realise that we just felt like we were coming to some sort of conclusion and now we've had the rug pulled out from under our feet. But we have to consider why Priestley might have chosen to end his play this way. Let's revisit the inspector's final speech when he says the time will soon come when if men will not learn that lesson then they will be taught it in fire and blood and anguish. Good night. So to recap, Priestley is suggesting that people have the choice whether or not to learn this lesson of social responsibility. If they refuse to help others and remain very selfish in their approach to life then ultimately, he says, they'll not get away with it. The words fire, blood and anguish could refer to war or hell. If people refuse to accept responsibility for anyone other than themselves, then this attitude could end in the horror of war. Alternatively, it may mean they'll have to pay the price in the afterlife. Even though Eric, Sheila and to some extent Gerald accept responsibility 
for their actions during the course of the play, Mr and Mrs Burning do not. The final phone call where the Burnings learn that a girl has now died after drinking disinfectant and is on the way to the infirmary supports the ideas proposed by the inspector in his final speech. It seems the lesson of social responsibility is inescapable. Men and women will be forced to learn that lessons have to be learned about social responsibility and they're going to learn them one way or another. Now, is the play really about the Burlings? That's something interesting to think about. Of course, no. The Burlings, Eva, Inspector Gould, they can all be seen as symbols. The Burlings represent the wealthy in society, and those are the people who Priestley is criticising as selfish, concerned primarily with money and their reputations. The younger characters, Eric and Sheila, show that young people are, as the inspector says, more impressionable. They're shown to be capable of learning the lesson of social responsibility and changing their ways. And this offers hope to an audience of the time who had just lived through one of two world wars and were trying to rebuild the future. If we educate young people, they are the ones who will make for a better society as they grow up. Mr and Mrs Burning represent the older, wealthy citizens who are equally selfish and capable of being cruel, but who are also less likely to change in their ways. And due to this, Priestley may well be proposing that we focus on the education of young people, making them realise the need to take responsibility for their actions rather than potentially wasting time on people who are far less likely to change. Eva represents the working class, not only women but men too. As the inspector says, one Eva Smith is gone but there are millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths still left with us. And this quote emphasises how the story isn't just about Eva but it makes us realise there are many people alive and suffering in our society. We should be aware that they may be struggling and help them whenever possible. Now, in the ebook, we also cover the question, what is Priestley's main message in the play? Is there anything I must include in an analytical essay? But I'll let you check that one out in the ebook at mrbuff.com or on Amazon.